As a modern musician, I find that it's really important that your desk, your space, and the equipment that you work with is all set up so when you sit down and get your creative juices flowing, everything just works seamlessly for you. A lot of that has to do with the computer and software you use and your physical gear and equipment, but a lot of it also has to do with the layout of the things that you use and trying to figure out how you can make everything work better for you, your workflow, and just the way you think. So with that said, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the most common consumer Mac. So this is the iMac. MacBook and Mac mini, as well as their potential layouts and the accessories you can use with each of them and maximize your music making experience. For this video, we're gonna be assuming that you're already familiar with the main peripherals used in a music setup. So that would be an audio interface, uh, studio monitors and or headphones, as well as MIDI controllers and all of the other infinite MIDI kinds of things you can use. Before we go into the specifics of each computer, I do wanna talk about what makes Macs unique in terms of setup. Macs do have this reputation for being the best computer for music. I actually don't necessarily agree with that. There are aspects about Mac software that makes them more convenient for musicians, but up until very recently with the Apple Silicon stuff, I felt like they were not a good fit for me at all because the price to performance was super whack. And if I ever pushed one to the limit, it just became a noisy hunk of aluminum for me. With Apple Silicon, I think the game has changed a lot and I do find them significantly more easy to recommend to my friends and people that I know, as well as just to myself. Here's a couple of their cool advantages. Because iMacs, MacBooks, and Mac minis aren't overly huge in a way that would necessitate them to be like placed on the floor like a traditional desktop PC, most, if not all of your cables can also be off of the floor. Even if those kinds of aesthetics aren't necessarily what you're concerned with, I always find that having a neat, workspace helps me to focus better on what's in front of me. The second is related to the many accessories and support there is available for Apple's products. Apple always tends to be the trendsetter in the industry and as a result there's a million third-party products for everything from their desktop computers to their smallest phones. You'll almost never be hard-pressed to find some kind of an accessory that fits your needs exactly unless you're looking for something extremely specific. Number three is silence. This mostly applies to the Apple Silicon computers, and I talk about it way too much. Dead f***ing silent. Dead f***ing silence. It's still completely silent. But what's great is because you can keep these things on your desk and very close by, if you did that with like a normal desktop gaming PC, you can make it very, very quiet, but it's not gonna be dead silent most of the time, especially under load. But you can keep your iMac or your Mac mini or your MacBook right next to you, and it's not gonna be interrupting you with loud fan noises that are gonna interrupt your workflow or frustrate you or distract you. All right. First up, on the actual computer side, we're going to be taking a look at the Apple iMac. The iMac has historically been a very popular choice for a lot of musicians, and you can see why. They are very aesthetically pleasing. And the new iMacs come in so many pretty colors. I mean, they have a purple iMac. Don't tell me you don't want a purple iMac. I won't believe you. I said, don't tell me. iMacs have a really cool minimalistic touch to them that I really like, since your computer and your screen are all integrated in this one package. So that's one less power cable and one less HDMI cable that you have to worry about to connect the two. I'm sort of a fan of minimalism, so I really like that because there's no cables even connecting the monitor to the computer. Before your music stuff gets involved, because that's definitely gonna have cables, it just looks like a space age cable setup. Somewhat of a caveat, depending on the type of person you are, is that does mean you're kind of stuck with that screen. And that might not be a problem because the screens on iMacs and really all of Apple's computers nowadays are always gorgeous. But if you're finicky about those kinds of things or you feel like, oh, maybe 24 inches is a little small, I'm kind of blind because I'm getting older and I want like a 32 inch 5K or something, you can get the external monitor, but you still have to use the normal iMac monitor. In terms of accessories, the most common accessory I see used and that I usually recommend for anyone who has an iMac is a monitor riser. These can definitely make more efficient use of your space and even add some more functionality to your setup. I see people put their audio interface under there. I've also seen people put their mouse and keyboard under it if they're slim enough. Or if you have a really thin MIDI keyboard like a MPK Mini, you can slide that under there too. 
Some of the stands are tailored specifically to the design language of the iMac, like this m base stand by Rain. You will see some stands that come with a USB hub. These are really cool, but I would still be careful. Sometimes the quality of the hub isn't that good. In general, I would stay away from putting stuff really like your audio interface through a hub. I think that should be as close to directly going to your computer as possible. Be careful also about the height that the monitor riser rises your monitor to. Technically, in proper computer ergonomics, the top of the screen should be level with your eyes roughly. And if you have a monitor riser that let's say is like eight inches high and then you have to add the height of the base of the iMac, is you're gonna have to like sit like this. And you can tilt the stand a little bit, but it's still not ideal. I would just recommend getting one that's only as high as you need it to go and not much more. We'll be looking at some other accessories that are also compatible with the iMac, but for now, we're gonna move on to the MacBook. Nothing combines the ease of power and portability as much as a good laptop does. And again, this is especially relevant for the new Apple Silicon equipped MacBooks. MacBooks have obviously been extremely popular for a very long time. I think that's because they're sort of a jack of all trades. They can give you everything from the portability you might need as a student going through college to being a powerhouse for you when you're done with school and you just wanna make some music or videos when you're home. If you find yourself regularly needing a computer you can use on the go, MacBook is just an obvious choice for you. I see about three different styles of setup used with MacBooks. The first is what I just call laptop only. It's a laptop sitting there, you plug in whatever you need to use and then you're done. The second is when you're using it with an external monitor. This way you can get more of the screen real estate on your main monitor, but you can also make use of the beautiful screen that Apple's put in on your computer. And then there's what's called clamshell mode, where basically you're kind of turning your MacBook into a Mac mini. It just acts as the computer for you and you can tuck it away or put it on a cool little stand. If you are a fan of the clamshell, shell idea. A lot of third-party companies make some really great stands that allow you to just go ahead and dock your computer. When it comes to accessories, I think a big topic, especially ever since Apple decided it would be a good idea to have only Thunderbolt ports on their computers, is uh, USB-C and Thunderbolt hubs. There is just a dizzying array of Thunderbolt and USB-C hubs available. These add a lot of potential to what you can do with your MacBook. You could be off doing whatever with your laptop in like a coffee shop. Obviously, you've got a Mac, you're going to be at Starbucks. When you get home, you can plug in one cable and now all of your accessories are ready to go. Your MacBook's charging. That is, if you have the right hub. If you're gonna be trying to support a lot of connectivity at once and you need it to be reliable, you're gonna to wanna to budget that out and make sure that you are accounting for that. I had a 2016 and a 2017 MacBook Pro a few years ago, and I used them with this USB-C hub by CalDigit. CalDigit also makes this other one that I couldn't afford at the time, but I think is really cool. It's the TS3 Plus. It adds a lot more flexibility for you and seems to be one of the more reliable ones sold. And in general, CalDigit and OWC seem to be the favorite brands for these kinds of you know, professional hubs. There are a lot of affordable options, obviously on Amazon as well, and in major retail stores in person. Just make sure you take into account your own needs and what you're willing to pay for. The last computer on our list is my favorite, not that I'm biased, the Mac Mini. In my opinion, the Mac Mini is the best option for most musicians, at least if they don't need the kind of portability that the MacBook has. It easily gives you the most bang for buck, particularly if you already have a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor laying around. And they're very, very flexible. The iMac is kind of like a center stage centerpiece for your studio. The Mac Mini excels in that it's the exact opposite. The Mac Mini is only a brain, a very small, very powerful brain. But if you prefer, you can make that very powerful brain out of the way or completely unseen and unnoticed. If you do decide to keep it on your desk, it's small and out of the way and it's very easy to access. So if you have a crowded desk, still got plenty of room for everything else you need. If you've got an exceedingly crowded desk, Third-party companies actually make mounts for the Mac Mini. You can mount it on the back of your computer monitor so it kind of turns into like a DIY iMac at that point, or even under your desk or to the side of your desk. I'm a big fan of the Mac Mini because of this flexibility. I feel like it gives a user more independence as far as if your monitor goes out or one little thing not related to just the direct computer itself goes out. You're not super SOL. You can go ahead and just swap whatever you need and you're fine. As far as accessories go, I really like this Satechi USB-C hub that kind of just fits exactly with the Mac Mini. I have one myself. I'm very glad that I have it even if it's just for one extra USB port and a card reader. There is a vertical holding stand, almost similar to like the clamshell book arc stuff we were seeing earlier. Something you might not know about the Mac Mini if you haven't owned one and had to Google this. 
The Bluetooth kind of sucks, but some people have said that the upright Mac Mini has a little bit better Bluetooth performance than when it's just sitting flat on your desk. I haven't tested this myself, so it's hard to say whether or not I can confirm that. Unless it's a super huge concern for you, I would recommend keeping it horizontal, at least if you want to use a similar Satechi hub like what I have, so that way you can make sure it stays compatible. How about general accessories? What kinds of things are gonna be working across the board? Most of the accessories we looked at can be used with any computer, so you don't need an iMac just to have a monitor stand and all those different USB and Thunderbolt hubs you can use with each computer if you want to. As I said before, you're probably going to want one just because musicians tend to have a lot of gear and peripherals. Even if it's just one extra USB port, you're gonna want something making that easier for you. And if you're like me, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's not some weird little dongle just hanging off the end of your computer because it looks stupid. When it comes to peripherals, obviously these aren't exclusive to musicians in any way, but if aesthetics and cleanliness are something that you like, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of wireless peripherals that you can get. Obviously Apple has their own, but you don't have to get an Apple mouse. Yes, that's right. You don't have to use Apple's peripherals. That includes the ergonomic abomination that is the Magic Mouse. The iMac and MacBook Pro open you up to pretty much anything that uses Bluetooth. The Mac Mini supports Bluetooth, but it's just not great. I have a Logitech K380, cool little switcher Bluetooth keyboard. That I don't really have any gripes with. When it comes to mice, I have a Logitech G604, and when I use that in the Bluetooth mode, it like skips a lot. And I find that whenever I'm using the actual included USB receiver, it performs so much better than when I'm using the Bluetooth on the Mac Mini. The last thing that I think I could recommend that's not a music specific accessory would be some kind of an external hard drive. Depending on what kind of storage option you configured or if you got one used, you may find that you really need an external hard drive or just really like one. External SSDs are on the market now and they're like less than a hundred bucks. So if that's in your price range, I would totally shoot for one because they're gonna be amazing on the performance side. If you feel like you want an extra drive just to offload any files, you don't really need but don't want to get rid of either you could probably get something even cheaper but if you're going to be wanting to use like your sample libraries or actually keep your active project files on a hard drive i would definitely recommend getting something like an external ssd that you can connect to really fast whether you're thinking about purchasing a new mac or you already have one and you're just kind of trying to browse around for ideas I hope that this video was helpful in making you think more about the gear that you want or the gear that you already have and how you can configure it to better work for you. With that said, the ultimate goal here as a musician is to make some music. Try not to think about gear or your computer too much unless you can tell that it's becoming a hindrance to your actual work. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like as that helps me know that I did a good job. And let me know in the comments if you found any other accessories or layouts that you found to be super critical in your musical productivity every day. I have been Matt. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. If my Mac Mini came in purple, I'd have a purple f***ing Mac Mini.